the next session is really it's, it's to follow on in terms of what uh, Theo spoke about. Um, great, sorry. I'm just trying to set up the the, the slide deck here, um, and it's really what we want to do is talk about the next probably 20 minutes is about how to your application kind of best practices, things that you should do. Um, to make your, you, yourself more successful and more credible from a development perspective, from a design perspective, from a deployment perspective. Uh, so what we're going to go through is just some simple things in terms of native controls, in terms of the app, uh, the importance of kind of live tiles, the importance of using the charm contacts, uh, talking a little bit about localization, localizability, talking about the global markets, and then to talk about store publications simple things that you need to do that are going to make you more successful and hopefully attribute yourself to more downloads along the way. So one of the big things is make a great app, right? That's, that's the big challenge, right? People have a lot of great ideas out there, but what you want to do is make sure that your app has got something of value um, and something of purpose. And that's something that somebody is going to consume as well. It's going to be beneficial to them in some shape or form, whether it's from a social perspective, from a work perspective, from a fun perspective. But really what you want to do is have something that's a little bit compelling for someone to use. And when you think about Windows 8, uh, we think about the new tiles that we see there. And when I think about tiles, I think about these tiles within Windows 8, they're alive. They're, they're, they're inviting me to go and do something. It's, it's the way I want to kind of personalize my home screen. And what you really want to do is get your tile on the front of that. Um, and live tiles, your investment in putting time and effort into a live tile is going to be critically important for your success, I believe. Um, when you think about the images that you want to have in terms of your, your start screen, you want something that's going to bring that to life, but you also want to have something that's going to be uh, interactive with you as well. A lot of people download lots of apps, and what you don't want to be is the app that's at the bottom of the next screen or the screen after that that never gets used. The ones that are successful and the ones that I tend to put towards my screen are the ones that I use quite a bit, and they're the ones that interact with me because sometimes I don't have time to, to do the level of searching and interaction that I need to. I want information presented to me. I'm a big Arsenal fan, so when Arsenal try and sign somebody over the next couple of weeks, hopefully I'll get alerted. But um, remember, live tiles will allow you to kind of engage with your customer in a, in a more meaningful perspective. Uh, it will allow you to um, have people activating on your app a lot more as well. So when you think about monetization models where advertising comes into play through freemium models, you know, people using your app um, over a protracted period of time is going to help you drive more revenue through advertising. And if it's on their home screen, people want to know about it. What's that app you're using there? And there's another shareability item that comes out of it outside of sharing within the actual app itself. So again, why do we want to invest in a live tile? Again, it draws users back into to, to, to your uh, app again and again and again. And it, it kind of puts a, a status on your, your app as well, that it's, it's, it's front and center of that user. Um, it allows kind of users to kind of place it, move it up uh, further along the screen if it's interesting and interactive to them. So the next thing I think everyone should look at is, is sharing. Um, so depending on the content that you have within your app, whether that's a game, whether that's a news feature, whether that's a, a, a interest feature that's within your app, share, sharing within uh, your app and taking advantage of the share contacts is actually critically important for you in order to, to engage and, and reach other audiences. Uh, Dermot's going to talk a little bit about as well how to tie social media aspects into the sharing uh, mechanism. But being able to share through Twitter, we heard Dr. Lynn or Theo uh, talk about the ability to share information uh, onto different sites, whether that's Facebook, whether that's Google+, whether that's Twitter, wherever that may be, to try and drive more interest and activity around your app. Um, so I would say that, that for every app out there, make sure it's part of your design. Um, think about the implementation of that. The, the key things is actually trying to understand the scenarios 
and when you might share. So for example, if you've got an RSS feed that's got some YouTube content that's coming into it, there might be something that's interesting from that YouTube content that you may wish to share. Again, tying that back to a hashtag or to a link to where your site is uh, or to where your app can be downloaded <coughs> from is going to drive a little bit more interest in terms of uh, what people are doing with that type of media content and how they're actually consuming it and hopefully drive people towards your app. Designing then for kind of global markets. So the great experience by actually using Windows is Windows is available worldwide. You know, we've got uh, Windows is localized itself into over 100 different languages and we've got you know access to stores and markets in over 200 plus locations. And um, that gives you an incredible opportunity um, to actually reach a global audience. So when we think about apps that are coming out of Ireland, Ireland is such a small space for you to, to, to target your user groups. But when you think about the, the global marketplace, this gives you the opportunity where you can actually start to grow and drive downloads and actually drive revenue for yourself going forwards. Um, one of the key aspects about um, building an application for global markets, there's, there's certain global sensitivities that you may look, need to look into. So if you are producing an app for whatever country, think about from the colors that you use right away to the language that you use, right away to the imagery that you use, how sensitive that is for, for those particular countries. Uh, the other thing as well is when you're, you're building out your store descriptions um, as you go along, you will be required to localize uh, every uh, store um, description that you're actually going to release your app in. And that also uh, uh, ties back into as well putting in localized screenshots as well. So if I can see that I'm, I'm Dutch, and I can see that this app is translated uh, and I've got a localized store description, well now I know that I can actually use it and I can consume it and this is something of value to me. Too often the most uh, developers around the world develop for maybe one or two languages and they miss out on the opportunity where uh, people want to consume and, and, uh, and view content that's local to them. And this provides you with, uh, with a, a piece of armory that, that's within your kit bag. And just also on that, it's also, CEO talked earlier in the previous session about ad duplex and keeping track of, of advertisements. Also keep track of market share. There's information comes out weekly about where Windows, where Windows Phone are popular. And take note, it mightn't be the main first world countries that you know of. There's been huge growth in China, in uh, South Korea, in other markets where you might initially think of targeting. but Again, these are areas to reach out and that the mass and scale that you can hit there is huge for a small amount of work. Absolutely. So designing for, for a global marketplace again, so just to kind of recap from what we talked about there, um, global apps in every location, in every language uh, gives you an incredible opportunity, but it's something that you need to invest in. That's something you need to support with. Uh, people might ask questions, how, how would you get someone to translate? Some store descriptions. I know developers here in Ireland that have reached out to their friends and families and connected through Twitter and Facebook around the world. And sometimes people will openly translate stuff for you on the fly. And uh, so this is a low cost way of actually doing that. Uh, remember again about globalization and globalization sensitivities. And these are, are kind of in market sensitivities that you need to uh, consider when designing your app as well. Uh, localization take full advantage of that. And if you're, you're, you're using Visual Studio, there's a multilingual uh, uh, toolkit uh, that's available that will help you translate uh, your applications uh, on the fly, which is incredibly rich in order for you to, to try and reach out to those markets as well. So next on to the store basics, and Dermot is gonna uh, talk about the store basics. Yeah, so these are just some of the things you can do to make your app more discoverable. And we talked about um, advertisements, social media, all these other places, but the number one place people will find your app and the place that they have to go to get it is through the store. So think about this, put a lot of work into your store description, put a lot of work into your screenshots, think it through what would appeal to you. And we talk here about the kind of different conversion rates and why trials matter. So Windows Phone was first to bring this to market and Windows 8 has continued this where trials are the de facto uh, presentation for your apps. 
So most apps that are paid come with a free trial or they're free. And we've seen that if you have a trial for your paid app, you get 70 times more downloads than an app that was just plainly paid only. Your conversion rate is about 10% higher and you make about 10 times as much revenue as someone who releases an identical app without a trial. And we talked today about the trials, we've talked about live tiles, we've talked about sharing. All three of these are very, very easy to implement in terms of code. The code is all available for free online. You can just paste it into your app. And it's usually only about two or three or four lines of code that you actually have to implement. Because a lot of this, Windows or Windows Phone will do the heavy lifting for you and it'll have that pre-written. So for, again, for a small amount of work, you can grow your market usually. And these are all small incremental things that anyone can do to any app they're working on. Um, next, I'm just going to talk about when you actually go to, go to store and what it should look like. So the next slide, um, I'm actually showing up two pages here. This is a page for uh, an app developer from, developer from Northern Ireland. Uh, he's built this Manchester United app. He's built the same one for Arsenal that Michael was referring to earlier. And this, I think, is an example of a good store page. He's got a, a rich description, which is quite short paragraph. Then he goes in to highlight some of the top reviews. So you can see these are real quotes coming from people. Then in a bullet point list, you've got the features of the app. And again, going from most important downwards. Um, and then in the middle, you can see the screenshots. So he has got the main home page, and he's filtered each one through to show the different aspects of the content. So the second one talks about the matches and live match scores. The third one, he's got it showing off the snap view. And the fourth one, he's got the, the still view. And the fifth one, he's got, again, a kind of summary of the performance of the team. But I can see so much from this app. And again, if it's for me, I'd know straight away this is what I'm interested in. I can see similar apps by this developer and the store you're looking at now is actually the store from Windows 8.1. So this is the way the apps are going to look from, more, from now on. There's going to be more and more features on the, the ratings. As you can see on the right hand side, the ratings in huge text and it brings in how many stars it gets. Um, the one thing to note on ratings, when you go to the store, you only see ratings from your country. So if you go to the Irish store, you'll see just ratings from Irish users. So that's important that any store you're in, that you have a good spread of reviews from that section so even if you have all five-star reviews in Ireland and one-star reviews in England or the UK, you're just going to come up with a one-star app in the UK. So it's it's important to get that mix across different geographies. Um, and if we compare this, so take a look at this image and then click on to this, which is a, a non-Irish developer, so we're not, we're not insulting anyone we know. But this is how not to do it. So if you look at the name, the name is Super Tic-Tac-Toe. Okay, they've got Tic-Tac-Toe in the name, but it's all one word. There's no space in between that. Um, yes, the app is free. But you can see the description is uh, six words, you know, a basic tic-tac-toe. You know, in terms of adjectives, basic isn't probably one you want to use in your description. It's got one feature, which is tic-tac-toe. Um, and, you know, as you can see, and there's one single screenshot. There's no settings. There's no snap view. There's nothing here. So this is someone who has put a, probably a bit of time into actually making this app. But they should have just put more time into polish and also into putting some effort into this store page. This is just an example of how a small bit of work can make things make an app of the same quality appeal a lot more. Um, and then here, just some of the main things to do to prepare for publication. So see a detailed list of these on uh, Microsoft.ie forward slash app hero. But here's the summary. So choose and reserve your name early. As soon as you decide what your name is going to be, or even before you start development, you can book your name. So you don't have to have your app ready before you choose your name. You can go on to the Dev Center, choose a name that fits. Um, and like Theo was saying, and we're going to hear later from a, another app developer, putting time into your name, putting time into the different scenarios that that will cover and what people will search with. You also have your app description, which can cover a different description for every language. And like uh, Michael was saying earlier, you might want to pick out key features which might appeal to different geographies more than others. Um, screenshots are really important. Put in multiple screenshots. You can do up to eight screenshots, but you should so show all the different aspects of your app, whether it be in Snap View, if you have a sharing feature, show that being used, and all the different screens that your app has. Um, and you can also, when you're uploading your screenshots and your icons, you can do multiple resolutions, which will match the resolutions of the user. And Go ahead. Also, just one thing, there's one thing to be overly sensitive about as well is that the imagery that you use, and we're not saying that, that people are going to use any imagery that would be inappropriate, but 
all that imagery needs to be able to be reviewed and viewed by someone who's 12 or less. So uh, you will actually fail certification if those descriptive uh, imagery uh, images are actually offensive in any way uh, to, to children of that age. Okay. Um, the other point you see is you can highlight features of your app which come in a bullet point view and then an age rating. So if you're a game, you may have to go through um, a PEGI or another certification board's age rating, or you can give suggestions of what your age is. Again, if you don't pick a suitable age, your app might be refused um, classability from the store. And then the final one is put some time into the category and subcategory that you want your app to fit into, because this is probably the most likely way people will find your app is through the, the categories that it's in, because as you would have seen in the previous screen with Windows 8.1, it makes suggestions based on the category you're in of similar apps that people might be interested in based on this. So the number one a bit of advice I give is if you have Windows 8 or Windows Phone, go into the store, explore some of the top apps, explore some of the most popular ones and see what they've done in their store pages and in their descriptions that make them stand out from all the other apps that are in the store. So the last piece then is promotion. and. Uh, I suppose one of the key things is you need to be kind of authentic and trustworthy. And Theo spoke about this very earlier on. It's, it's you know, if I'm going to be using your app, I'm going to be sharing information or I'm going to be, um, I have got issues if the app has, has, has problems. You, you need to be able to have, you know, details, contact details. I need to, 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 to be able to, to, to reach out and, and find out who you are. There's a couple of things that you can do around that. So one is to, to uh, on your website, uh, put down some, some things that, will, that we can support you with, which is the Windows Store logos, that we can direct them directly into the store to download your app. So they know that the apps are coming from a trustworthy uh, uh, environment when they go through their web searches. The other thing as well is having your publisher website. So you know, who are you? What have you done? Uh, how can people get in contact with you? Uh, how can they report issues? Uh, is there a form that they can, can, can raise items? Is there a form that can actually raise uh, feedback and kind of say, listen, really love your app, love to see the next following features in? Because really what you want to try and do is have people love your app, uh, share it with others, and, and see it continuously updating. Yeah, and these aren't things that we would say um, these aren't just for top apps, these aren't for the RTs of the world, these are things that anyone can implement even if it's a small single app. You can get a website for, you know, whatever the name is, your app.com for nine or ten euro. You know, you can get a WordPress page spun up in about half an hour. So these are something that really small amounts of work can have a large impact on your SEO and then also this is a place where you can bring people back. CEO talked about um, you might want people with a positive um, five-star review to go straight to the App Store people with a negative review push them towards uh, sending you directly feedback for what suggestions you'd like to see. And with a website, you can, like uh, Michael was saying, you can have these suggestions come directly to you. You can have your privacy statement all there. It just has a lot more professional um, feeling to the app without any extra cost or any much work for the app developer. Absolutely. And when, when that gets to social media, and, and I suppose how you can use social media either within the app or actually to use social media networks to promote your app. This authenticity and trustworthiness is actually a vital component in terms of why people would actually choose your app or even download your app. Uh, on social media, I suppose there's, people have asked me how can, what are simple low cost things I could do to try and drive downloads and trying to increase my awareness uh, of my app. I suppose, think about the, Theo talked about the different sites, the different Facebook sites, the different uh, forums, the different Twitters, uh, hashtags, whatever that may be, in terms of that w which has an association with your app. So if you're a sports app, for example, if you take the Man United app that's out there, get on the Man United Facebook, try and post some updates that are there, tell people about your app, put a link in towards your app, uh, get onto their, their, their uh, Twitter handle, and talk about, listen, just checked out the live scores from my Manchester United app here. This is amazing. I'm keeping well connected in. These are low cost, right? People are going to will either look at them, discard them, but some of these will land. Uh, and some of them may actually see it downloaded and actually retweet it. 
and that will we'll, we'll, we'll build out again uh, your reach in a very kind of simple way to do that. And you can do all this without you know incurring any costs with, with you know uh, AdWords or other advertising channels that you may need to go through as well, which will probably have less of a return in terms of the activity that you do. Um, but social media is your friend in that light, but you need to invest in it. All these things, as, as CEO said at the start, if you build it, they will come. Doesn't really happen. The legwork happens after you've built it and how you're trying to promote it. And what you need to do is actually dedicate time and uh, dedicate a strategy around it and, uh, and see what works, see what doesn't, what works, spend more time on it, and see if you can amplify it even more. And the final thing I'd just add is that the other source of support here is the, the team we have here in Dublin, between myself, Dermot, um, we've Michael, we've Ryan also in the room. We have um, we see hundreds of apps, and we also have links into the stores, to the spotlight, and we can tell you how it is that certain apps get spotlighted or the stones. We can help you out if we see, if we like your app, we'll help review it, we'll endorse it to other people we meet. Um, so if you want to get a hold of us, it's app Ireland at Microsoft.com. Send us a link to your app. We'll install it. We'll give you some feedback. We'll tell you all of our store page and what's coming up. So again, another place for support. All these pieces. We just we want to know about your app. So come tell us app Ireland at Microsoft.com about what you're working on.